Okay, and welcome back for part two, where we're going to talk a little bit about web design, webinar design. Now, you may have noticed that I've added my email address in the text chat window, and I've also put in um, a voting poll so that one of the important elements of your uh, webinar design is to include an opportunity to get feedback. So this is just a simple online uh, voting tool that we would um, allow the participants to, to see uh, the response to um, the question. Um, please rate how useful this video was to you. OK, um, let's have a quick look here at some of the webinar design elements. OK, what features have you used in a good webinar? So um, I'm going to ask you to pause the video um, and, and have a think about any webinars that you've attended, that you've sat in on, and what, what tools or, or what elements did they have. Um, uh, take about three minutes to do this, and then turn the video back on, and we'll carry on the discussion. Okay, um, I hope you've had a chance to make some notes. And here are a few things that uh, I would recommend that uh, are useful to consider as uh, key elements in, in your webinar design. So first of all, um, what, what technology are you going to be use, using? Uh, for example, this is being recorded in Adobe Connect um, as a platform. There are a number of other ones that are available. We'll, sh we'll, we'll show you. Um, the media that you're going to be using. Uh, are you going to be using video, uh, still images, text, audio? What system features do they have? Will they have live text chat, like I've, I've just demonstrated here below my, my video image? Um, will you have a whiteboard tool um, or voting, as I've just also included? Um, uh, will you be doing a certain specific instructional design? Will it be for a one-to-one -one webinar? or one to many, where you are presenting to a live uh, group, um, perhaps in, in a, in a, a, a large face-to-face -face auditorium, or a one to many ones, where your webinar is uh, being uh, webcasted to many individuals, say, in the office. And then, of course, just as this webinar is being done, that's a recording as well, and you can capture the screen as, as the video from this one will be showing, or you could have a live camera in the room recording what's happening with the webinar. And this particular would be useful if you're doing um, an interview. So here are some examples that you can see. Um, uh, the 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 uh, the systems can uh, vary from being free, um, uh, or they can uh, come with a, a, a platform. So, for example, Skype comes with a Microsoft Office 365, um, or you can pay for a, a, a license. Um, uh, for example, the Adobe Connect um, system that I'm using is cloud-based, so um, that's really useful. Um, you don't have to have your own server. And because it's set up um, through the web browser, you don't even have to install um, um, a, a, an executable file sitting on the local hard drive. And that can be um, uh, very useful uh, if you have a high security uh, in your organization that blocks you from installing executable files. But like uh, Skype uh, and, and, and many others, um, you would have to install an executable file in the local hard drive to make it uh, work. Um, lots of media types that, that uh, we're, we're going to be working with. Um, you can have, of course, text. You can have PowerPoint slides. You can um, use uh, uh, animation. And you can also be able to um, uh, have uh, interactive uh, video, as we're trying to do here, where we uh, pause the, the, the video and try to get you to do an, an, an activity as well. 
So some of the systems features that I'd like you to consider um, are broken up into, into this category that I refer to as like a pre-event before the face-to-face -face or the actual webinar and then um, during the event. And a nice way to follow up is to have a post event. So, for example, you can have topic questions before things begin, as, as we've tr tried to do with this uh, particular uh, webinar recording. Um, you might do like team ice breaking type of activities. This is often referred to as a, as a flipped uh, classroom uh, approach where you're putting the content up beforehand and that allows you in the actual webinar to have the discussions. Of course, you might want to do some type of voting or poll. Um, this is a great way to get a profile of the audience so you know who the stakeholders are that you're talking to. The webinars themselves, uh, the systems have many tools now, from breakout rooms, the audio and video that we mentioned, a live text forum. Um, uh, you can do the PowerPoints, whiteboard. Um, there's an audio mode where you can make it as a, an audio podcast. Uh, sharing the screen is very powerful. If, for example, you're demonstrating a particular software, that you have that the the uh, audience doesn't uh, have that that gives them an opportunity to see something um, live. Um, simulations uh, are a great way to to uh, get the uh, um, uh, uh, the audience engaged. Um, you can have uh, the the Q and A can be public or it can be one to one. Um, there's toll-free numbers. You can use audio using the phone. Um, and of course, uh, a powerful element is to be able to have this through your mobile phone as well. Now, after the event, um, what I would encourage is to have you get the opportunity to have a, a, some type of social media. Okay, you, you, you can see I've done a small poll here, but we could also uh, encourage people to rate the uh, event uh, uh, um, through Facebook or LinkedIn. Um, you can have carry-on discussions in text uh, forums um, and build that online community. Uh, another way of, of getting people involved is the event recordings and making the PowerPoint slides available. So um, that could be for people who miss the event, but just as well, it can be for people who would like to revisit what was what was said. So um, in instructional design, I refer to this as the is the PAP model, the pre, at, and post. So most of us tend to focus very much on the at. I would argue that the pre activities and the post activities can also contribute to the learning event. Interaction models, I mentioned earlier, be explicit. Are you going to be doing it one to one, individual type of tutorial type of model? You know, or is it going to be one to many? Will the many be live in one room? Um, you may want to consider whether or not uh, they all speak uh, the same language. Um, you might need to have a local facilitator in the room to help moderate any questions that come to uh, the presenter. And then uh, one to many ones where you have a number of different individuals in a virtual audience. Um, and then there can be variations on those. But some of the key roles to consider would be the host and the facilitator. The, they're going to be uh, guiding the presenter. They signpost uh, the audience questions and comments and they provide technical support. So during the webinar, if uh, there's any sign, sound issues, people can't hear you, um, that's critical. That can make or break your, your event. Now, recordings are very powerful. Uh, I highly recommend that uh, you uh, look into data protection regulation re uh, rules, um, that you consider ethical release forms and, and various techniques. Uh, um, if you are doing a screen capture, um, as we're doing right now, uh, that can be uh, kept capturing the audio, the video, the text chat as well. 
um, and then you can have cloud storage. Uh, it can be downloadable and also put up into YouTube. If you're doing a live face-to-face -face type of event, um, you can have one or more cameras. Um, the, the audience can be using their mobile phones. This is a very powerful technique. And there's also uh, augmented reality where we can be using things like 360 cameras, um, clip-on mics, omni, omni mics, and, and other various technologies. So where do I see this going? What's the next generation of webinars? Well, the, the immersive 360 fishbowl um, is, is where I believe uh, we can take this type of model. Um, a a fishbowl discussion, as you can see in this picture, is a, a circle um, using the Socratic method where you're trying to understand through inquiry. Um, there's freedom to think by deconstructing uh, and, and discarding any pre-existing draft ideas. What we're trying to do is expose unknown or um, uh, any ambiguity. Um, and the complexity makes the respondent realize that they've got more things to think about. So this is a, a very powerful method. How could this be done in a webinar? Well, this is a, a model that uh, I've been working on. It shows a number of different circles and technologies that are going that are, are, are possible to use. Um, uh, over on the left hand side, you can see um, a, a number of um, uh, elements that are, are in the key that I'll go through in more detail. And then you can see in the bottom left um, what the screen in the face-to-face -face room would look like. So in the inner circle, what you have is the um, experts that would be doing, say, a plenary discussion. But instead of in a, in a, a, a line, uh, as you have in a normal conference, we're doing what we, we call the unconference. And it's a circle. And within that circle, you can see a number of different technologies. We've got the 360 uh, video camera. We've got um, an Omni mic uh, linked up to a laptop, which will be um, uh, taking the audio and, and uh, converting that into um, text. So we'll have a, a good uh, text transcript. And then we can also be making from that a text ta a tag cloud as well. The um, uh, experts are being supported by um, a local host, um, as well as um, someone who is a facilitator in the circle that will be the, the link between the face-to-face uh, -face audience and the um, virtual audience that we'll be showing you in a moment. So the next uh, level out is the blue ring, where we have the the face-to-face -face audience, as well as the camera person. So these face-to-face -face audience would have the opportunity to swap with the people in the inner circle when they uh, have questions or would like to in engage with the experts. And then finally, we have in the outer circle, we have the, the virtual audience. And they are mediated through the facilitator in the red ring in the middle. Um, where they, they are participating uh, using a text chat um, with any questions, um, the facilitator would have the option of giving them video or audio access as well. Um, and as you can see, uh, uh, the, the, the various uh, rings are going to be interacting and you know, trying to uh, participate but also to participate from the various perspectives of the virtual audience, the yellow ring, the uh, uh, blue audience, uh, the blue ring, which is the face-to-face the -face audience, and then the red ring, which is the experts in the middle. And we would encourage people to use their mobile phones um, in order to capture the event, as well as the camera person and the 360 camera in order to be able to uh, get that immersive uh, perspective. 
So finishing off, um, I have a, a toolkit which is available for you from this uh, workshop. I call this the Flatpak Webinar Toolkit Checklist. So the download link is there. Um, what I would suggest that you do is uh, with you know any any of uh, the the resources um, that are available, you know please respect copyright. Um, if you would like to use this um, or or uh, promote it in in any other uh, events that you're doing, I would uh, appreciate uh, being contacted and uh, letting me know so that uh, the um, copyright is respected. But this toolkit has um, uh, uh, all the various elements that we've been discussing where you have the opportunity to, to check uh, and, and prepare for the webinar design. Now, um, the post event is, is what one of my favorites. It's called the One Minute Essay. Um, this is a reflective exercise on the, on the webinar where I'm going to ask you to participate in, in an activity. So review the PowerPoint slides. There's a link there uh, which has uh, the various slide elements to it. Um, we'd ask you to, uh, to get a, a timer. You can use your, your own stopwatch or your own uh, uh, wristwatch, or there's an online timer you can use which will give you the one minute. It, you know, it, we would want you to be strict about writing uh, in just one minute. And the questions uh, that we want you to focus on are, what was the one thing which you've learned in this webinar that may impact on your professional practice? What have you learned? Okay, there's no right answer on this. Um, you would just annotate the first thing that comes to your mind. Um, and then when you're finished with that, what I would ask you to do is to email me at abasil, A-B-A-S-I-E-L, at gmail.com in order to be able to uh, get this. Um, oh, oh, and the subject would be Instructional Design Conference 2019, so that I know it's from, from you from the conference. Um, and, if, if, and if you give me permission, what I will do is add that to our discussion forum link. All right, well, um, I'd like to thank you for uh, your participation. And um, it, my contact information is here in the final slide, and uh, I hope you found this uh, interesting and useful, and we do hope that you will uh, get in touch with us uh, soon. Thanks very much. Bye now.